Hello everyone, my name is Gioacchino Castolio. I work from Meraki in technical support and a lot of weird stuff gets escalated to me, among which uh, RADSEC tickets. Uh, I have a, a few tips for you, They're mostly practical, and uh, we will describe them in a, in a story. First, some takeaways for this presentation. RADSEC increases the overall security of your solution. However, it comes with a lot of moving parts that can break. And so we need to learn how to integrate our troubleshooting, spanning from packet analysis to log analysis on the, the RADSEC server. And we also need to be prepared for future outages by labbing as much as possible. Create your own lab, try to match your product your environment if you have the right equipment. Right. Uh, the story begins with us needing to deploy a new WLAN over a weekend on 500 sites. They're all distributed geographically, and they all need to authenticate um, to our server in the data center. This is a big surface uh, for attacks from bad actor, which come from within and outside the, our organization. We have different options. First is Radius. However, Radius is kind of an open book. A lot of information gets uh, carried in plain text. We are lucky because um, there have been a lot of improvements lately with uh, um, randomization of Mac uh, or um, username obfuscation with uh, anonymous identities, etc. We also dodged the bullet. Uh, with uh, Blast Radius fairly recently, a couple of months ago, uh, because we use EAP. However, we really don't know what's, uh, uh, what the bad actors want to, to use against us in the future. So, best idea is to encapsulate everything within Radius, within um, a TLS tunnel, and this is a, a RADSEC. If we use uh, a, packet, a packet capture and we uh, inspect the traffic, uh, within this tunnel, we just see gibberish. It's something that is not understandable. However, this increased the difficulty for us to troubleshoot, because if it is gibberish for an attacker, it's gibberish for us as well. Right. We deployed this over the weekend, five, say 500 new um, sites, and we go home, all good, and we log in the following morning. Uh, we, re we get a bunch of tickets saying, oh, the SSID doesn't work on a single site. No one can connect, so we check on dashboard. There's a wi wireless help page, both for the entire network and for a single access point, like in this case, and we notice that no client can connect and it always fails during the RSN authentication phase. Uh, what can we do? We can validate what's happening um, by creating, initially creating some hypothesis. Maybe it's valid credentials or a failure in the tunnel, uh, in the TLS tunnel. Again, we can take a packet capture directly on dashboard in the Ethernet interface, and we see immediately that there are a bunch of TCP retransmissions. These are all. Uh, the synchronization bit set to one, and so this tells us that the three-way handshake is not even starting at this point. Why so? There was a firewall rule upstream of that uh, impacted network that was f filtering TCP port 2083 that was implemented before uh, our RADSEC rollout. So be mindful of, about this big change, uh, right, it's a case TCP is based, of course. Right, everyone is happy, we removed the ACL, everything goes well for a, for a few months until this happens on a Friday afternoon just before we wanted to disconnect. No one can connect, can connect anywhere in the network, no site works. Let's make some hypothesis. Uh, we check on the uh, change log that there were no configuration changes in the past couple of weeks. Also, um, all branches are impacted, so this must be something big and related either to the routing 
or to the RADSEC server itself. This time it will troubleshoot from a different angle, starting from its server. Here, I, this is in a lab. I used a, a, free, a free radio server configured for RADSEC. However, the same principle apply to uh, other vendors like Cisco Eyes. Uh, and as you can see, this complains that uh, a client, a TLS client, cannot recognize uh, the certificate, certification authorities provided uh, on the server certificate. What is the client here? It's the access point itself, which acts as a TLS client. If we take another Ethernet port uh, packet capture, we see that the, uh, the radio server sends its server hello, and the client uh, and the access point immediately replies with uh, a, a, a TLS alert saying, I don't know the certification authority, and it immediately resets the uh, TCP tunnel. So what happened? We need to check if there's a match between dashboard and the, uh, the RADSEC server. And indeed, in this case, the, even the common names of the, uh, certificate, of the certificates is different. Uh, it turned out that someone changed uh, the RADSEC server instance and didn't tell us. Uh, this was rolled back with a very simple backup. They just pin up a, a backup. Yeah? Um, Again, everything is good, we can go home, and a few months go by, and on a faithful Sunday, when, you are on, when we are on call, we receive a ticket saying that the CEO cannot connect to the, uh, uh, to the SSID. It is a single client being impacted, and interestingly enough, they can connect to a guest SSID on the same access points. So probably this is related to client misconfiguration or RADSEC configuration, uh, misconfiguration for that one specifically. Right, let's go back to the logs and we see that we have a EAP TLS problem here related to the certificate that expired. This is very different from what we saw before because here we go back to the EAP authentication, not to the TLS tunnel between the access point and the, and the RADSEC server. And we can validate this observation by taking a packet capture on the access point on the wireless interface. We can do it on Wi-Fi 6 and, and the newer access point for Meraki. And we notice that the, <coughs> the RADSEC server sends its hello, uh, hello in, with the certificate. The client responds with <coughs> with its own certificate, and nothing happens for a few seconds until the clients roam away. If we dig into the, certi the certificate for the client, we notice that it expired four hours before we started the, the, our investigation. Keep in mind that uh, despite we enabled uh, RADSEC, nothing changed in the, on, over the air for us. And this is very important. So whatever you learn, we learned um, on, uh, with, with Radius and uh, WPA3 Enterprise uh, still applies in this context. This leads us to the end of our story. Um, I would recommend again to spin your own lab as much as po uh, matching as much as possible your production environment. That's my lab there. And I would also like to share with you a uh, step-by-step guide by my uh, colleague Evan, uh, who, who helped me cr uh, cre creating this, this uh, reproduction. And I really appreciate uh, being here. Uh, I hope this was informative for you, and connect to, on LinkedIn with me. Thank you, everyone.